One day, while my husband Sullivan was on a business trip abroad. Let's get married. He sent me a message saying so. What is this? It seemed he had accidentally sent the message to me instead of his affair partner. Ever since he was transferred to a new department, Sullivan's suspicious behavior had been increasing. He never cared about skin care, but suddenly. This lotion is supposed to be good. I had thought it was strange, and now it seemed that Sullivan, who never helped with childcare or housework, had been busy with an affair. How foolish can this man be? Then, the message was immediately deleted. Sullivan must have realized his mistake and hurried to delete it. I would have loved to see his expression at that moment. Of course, I had already taken a screenshot, so deleting the message was pointless. I saw the message you sent. Uh, well, that message was... Even over the phone, I could tell he was panicking. But don't you mean divorce instead of marriage? After that, Sullivan would come to learn the truth. My name is Carol, 34 years old. I've been married to Sullivan for eight years, and we have a daughter named Mariah who is in second grade. I met Sullivan through a friend. When my friend showed me a picture of Sullivan for the first time, I thought he was my type, and I asked my friend to introduce us. Thick eyebrows, a high nose, and tanned skin. I liked people with strong features. With my friend's support, I got a chance to have dinner with Sullivan, and we hit it off, quickly starting a relationship. Our relationship was smooth, and a year into dating, I found out I was pregnant. We're having a baby, so why don't we get married? Sullivan said. Of course. I look forward to it. I replied. And so, we got married. It wasn't a romantic proposal, but I was still happy about Sullivan's proposal. I used to work as a web designer before getting pregnant, but my morning sickness was so severe that I decided to quit my job not wanting to inconvenience my colleagues any further. When I reported my resignation to my boss, it's really sad to lose such a talented person like you, but your health comes first. Have a safe delivery. And if you ever want to come back, just let us know. She said, I felt grateful to have worked in such a supportive environment, but I decided to focus on my pregnancy. And soon, I safely gave birth to a baby girl. We named her Mariah. For a while, I didn't look for work and devoted myself to being a housewife, focusing on household chores and raising Mariah. But honestly, living solely on Sullivan's salary was challenging. So, when Mariah started kindergarten, I began working part-time at a supermarket. However, having not worked since giving birth to Mariah, I quickly became mentally exhausted. Moreover, since Mariah was still young, Mariah has a fever, please come and pick her up. The kindergarten often called me, which made me feel very sorry towards my colleagues. To make matters worse, Sullivan's lack of understanding of housework and childcare was hard to bear. Wow, what is this meat? It's too tough. I can't eat this. Sorry, but I'm throwing it away. Although he seemed apologetic, Sullivan would still casually throw away the meal I had made despite being busy. Sure, it might have been a bit tougher than usual. But saying it was inedible was too much. With housework, work, and childcare, I wished he could cut me some slack. There are other instances, too. You know, the bathroom floor was a bit dirty, could you clean it up? It doesn't have to be today, tomorrow is fine. He said this with a smile. If he noticed, why didn't he just clean it himself? This attitude extended to our parenting responsibilities as well. When it comes to Mariah, should we choose a private preschool or the nearby public one? I asked Sullivan. Hmm. I'm not really sure, Carol, you should decide. All decisions about parenting were left entirely to me. 
Sullivan never thought of himself as being inconsiderate. In his mind, he probably believed he was being kind. Indeed, Sullivan's tone was always gentle, and he wasn't the type to force his will on others. Both Sullivan and I had calm personalities, so we never had major arguments while dating. That's why I never noticed this side of him until we got married. It only became apparent after we started living together. I first realized it when I cooked a homemade meal for Sullivan. Wow, this is delicious. I didn't know you could cook, Carol. Thanks for the meal. He said, smiling, while casually leaving his plate on the table and stretching out on the couch. What? He's not even going to take his plate to the sink? I was a bit shocked. Hey, could you at least take your plate to the kitchen? I said without thinking. To my surprise, Sullivan looked shocked too. From his reaction, I realized he never did anything at home growing up. When I asked him to carry his plate, he was surprised, but... Oh, sure, I'll take it. He responded immediately. Since then, if I remind him, he does what I ask, but he never acts on his own. When I was about to return to work, I'm going back to work, so I need you to help out more with childcare and housework. I had warned him, but it seemed Sullivan had already forgotten. I'm home. When he got back, he tossed his coat onto the sofa and started taking off his socks and shirt while walking. It was like he was leaving a breadcrumb trail of his belongings. Sullivan was worse at picking up after himself than Mariah, who was in preschool. Mariah would often scold him. Dad. You can't just leave your stuff here. Seeing this was a regular sight in our home. Sorry, Mariah. When Mariah scolded him, Sullivan would start tidying up, but I couldn't tell if he was truly remorseful. When Sullivan came home, I felt like another big kid had returned, which left me feeling drained. Even so, with both Mariah and I constantly reminding him, we managed to get by as a family of three. Despite being disappointed in Sullivan's lack of cooperation, I told myself this was just part of marriage. Time flew by, and Mariah entered second grade. Sullivan and I turned 34. Without more calls from the preschool, things with Mariah calmed down, so I started a side job in addition to my part-time work. I wanted to get back into web design, my previous career, so I searched online and managed to increase my income a bit. I believed that we could continue to cooperate and lead a simple, everyday life. One day, I got transferred starting in April. Sullivan told me. Sullivan works in the accounting department at the headquarters of a plumbing fixtures manufacturer. Sullivan's company has always had nationwide transfers. Department and branch transfers are not uncommon. So, while I knew this day could come, I was still surprised when it actually happened. What? Does the transfer mean we have to move? No, actually, my job at headquarters will stay the same. I'll be transferring to the business development department. It's a new department starting in April. Is that so? That's a relief. I was a bit shocked. Yeah, me too. When the manager told me about the personnel announcement, I thought I'd finally have to relocate and was prepared for a solo transfer. Sullivan laughed. I thought we'd be able to continue living together as usual, but it was around six months after Sullivan's transfer that his return home suddenly started to be very late. Another late night at work today. I'll be home late. Sullivan would tell me before leaving for work. You've been really busy lately. Yeah. Since the department is new, we're figuring things out as we go, so it takes a lot of time. I see. Just don't push yourself too hard. Yeah, thanks. I'm off. It's natural that starting something new takes time to get organized. I naively thought things would settle down soon. 
However, no matter how much time passed, the overtime didn't decrease. On top of that, he started going on more business trips, and there were even weekends when he didn't come home. As these days continued, I can't play with dad lately. I wish he would come home earlier. Why isn't dad home these days? Mariah, too, began to look lonely with Sullivan's late returns. It's hard on young Mariah. Seeing Mariah feeling lonely, I felt that this couldn't go on. Mariah looks lonely every day. Can you stay home a little more? Mariah is an elementary school student now, right? She'll be fine. Eventually, she'll make friends and won't be interested in me anymore. It's true that as Mariah becomes a junior high school or high school student, she'll have more distractions, friends, and maybe a boyfriend, and might come home less often. That's why now, when she wants to be with us, is so important. Sullivan's irresponsible comment made me angry. What? How can you say that? Can't you think about Mariah a little more? She's saying she wants to be with you now. Lately, you haven't taken her out at all. Can't you think about her a bit more? Seeing my face turn red with anger. Ugh. Sullivan sighed deeply with an annoyed look. What? I'm just working hard. And you're complaining. That's not what I mean. Then what is it? I'm tired. Stop yelling at me. You, a part-time worker, can't understand my position. If you have time to complain, perfect your cooking and housework first. Are you saying I'm not doing a good job? No, not really. Anyway, I'm busy. I'm leaving. Sullivan left the house, slamming the door hard on purpose. Just a part-time worker. So that's what he thought. If he calls me just a part-time worker, that might be it. But part-time workers aren't necessarily not busy. I've been working five days a week, seven hours a day, coming home and diving straight into childcare and housework without a moment to rest. I don't think I'm slacking off, but apparently, Sullivan thinks I'm taking it easy. Since Sullivan's transfer, our marriage has been deteriorating. There's something else that's been bothering me about Sullivan's behavior. It's that he's suddenly become quite concerned with his appearance. Sullivan used to have no interest in skincare, using cheap men's face wash without a second thought. But now he's suddenly. This cleansing gel is amazing for getting rid of skin impurities. I was shocked that Sullivan even knew what cleansing gel was. He also said, this toner is really popular in Korea, and started applying it after his showers. Hey, what's going on? You never cared about skincare before. Hmm? Oh, some of the younger guys at work told me about it. I guess I need to start paying attention to my skin too. Now that I'm getting older. Now that I'm getting older. I initially took Sullivan's words at face value. But one day, my trust in him was completely shattered. That day, as usual, Sullivan came home late, claiming he had to work overtime. I'm exhausted. I'm going to take a shower first. And hurried off to the bathroom. I thought it must be tough having such a busy job when Sullivan's phone, which he'd left on the table, started ringing. Usually, he takes his phone into the bathroom but today he must have forgotten in his haste. I glanced at the screen. It wasn't locked, so I could read the entire message displayed on it. Today was so much fun. Thank you for always covering the meal and hotel expenses. When can we meet again? What is this? The sender's name was Caddy, clearly a woman's name. From the content, it was obvious that Sullivan had been with Caddy just before coming home. Did he rush to the bathroom to erase any traces of meeting someone? I couldn't believe it. Had all those late nights and business trips been lies? 
ignoring Mariah who wanted to play with dad, lying about being busy with work and seeing another woman instead? The word divorce crossed my mind. But at the same time, as Sullivan says, I am just a part-time worker. Even though I've started a side job, it's not taking off yet, and my monthly earnings are minimal. Thinking about Mariah's future, I doubted I could support her on my own. Should I pretend I didn't see anything? I had to put Mariah's happiness first. After thinking it over while Sullivan was in the shower, I decided to stay silent. If I pretended not to know, Mariah could still have her dad around. After a while, Sullivan came back from the shower. He picked up his phone and looked at me with a worried expression, but when I acted like I hadn't noticed anything. He quickly turned his attention back to his phone. He quickly turned his attention back to his phone. Sullivan seemed quite pleased with the message from Caddy. Judging by the slight smile on his lips. I felt a surge of anger so intense that I almost wanted to stab him with a knife, but I had to hold back for now. Then. Hey, I have a business trip this weekend. Could you pack my overnight stuff? As I was packing his things, from the pocket of his suit jacket, a hotel loyalty card fell out. And for someone who never cared about beauty products. I heard this face mask is amazing. I'll take it with me on the trip, so put it in the case. He said. Pretending not to notice, he seemed to think he was getting away with his affair. While sitting alone in the living room. Ugh. I let out a big sigh, and Mariah came over. Mom, don't sigh. You'll chase away the happiness. She said, putting her hand on my mouth. What a sweet child. I just adore Mariah so much. To protect her, I keep telling myself to endure it. Even after that, Sullivan would always say it was for work. Can you at least bring in the laundry? I asked. I'm tired from work. Laundry is women's work, isn't it? He replied. Can you help Mariah with her homework? I asked. I've used my brain all day at work. I don't want to deal with that at home, he said. And the most frequent one was, I'm going to be late again because of work. Oh, and I have another business trip next week, he said, blaming work for not doing anything around the house, not even being home. In summary, it meant he was having too much fun cheating to bother with anything. Thinking about this, I reached for Sullivan's suit jacket to clean up the mess he made and found a piece of paper in the pocket. It was divorce papers. What is this? Not only that, but Sullivan had already signed it. He wouldn't have signed it if he didn't plan to submit it. After being treated like this, do I really not need a divorce? Sullivan is already moving on to be with Caddy. Before, I felt shocked and sad about his affair because I still had feelings for him. But now, after everything, there's no love left for Sullivan. However, when I think about Mariah, that's the only thing and the only thing I'm concerned about. For now, I'll keep these divorce papers safely. Until the time comes. So, I decided to start preparing for the divorce. The first thing I need to do is find a job. I'll have to raise Mariah on my own from now on. Working part-time at a supermarket, my biggest concern is money. How can I become a full-time employee? Where should I work? Then, I thought of someone who could be a strong ally. My former boss. She was a single mother named Jody. I knew she raised two kids while working. I thought she might understand my situation. Even after I quit, we met about twice a year, and she cared about me. But I quit because of having kids, would she still want to hire me now? It was hard to say, but I decided to call her. Hi, Jody. Long time no see. Well, hello. Long time no see. 
Jody answered immediately. Actually, a lot has happened, and I might be getting a divorce from Sullivan. What? Suddenly? You seem so happy together. Could it be? Jody seemed to sense something. Yes, it's true. Sullivan was having an affair. He wants a divorce, and so do I, but I want to work as a full-time employee because of our daughter. That's why I'm asking if I can be rehired. Jody listened to my story with genuine concern. She was silent for a while, thinking it over. Well, I'll talk to the HR department. Honestly, the company is short-staffed, and having someone as capable as you come back would be a big help. Really? Thank you so much. I felt a huge sense of relief at her words. But, do you have solid evidence of the affair? What? Evidence of the affair? I have hotel loyalty cards and screenshots of messages, but that's about it. That's not enough. To really make Sullivan pay, you need more concrete evidence. As someone with experience, I'll help you gather it. What? Experience? When I heard Jody's story, I found out that her reason for being a single mother was also her husband's infidelity. Jody had hired a lawyer and gathered plenty of evidence to claim compensation which made the divorce proceedings go smoothly and ensured she got both child support and alimony. You need solid evidence to get a favorable divorce. Messages alone aren't enough, you need multiple photos of him entering and leaving hotels or the affair partner's house. What? That much evidence? I had no idea. I was stunned. I didn't realize gathering evidence was that hard. But don't worry. I'll introduce you to the detective agency I used. I'll even go with you. Jody arranged for us to visit the detective agency the following week and accompanied me as promised. She was truly a reliable person, just as she had been when we worked together. Six months passed. Even so, Sullivan hadn't asked me for a divorce. For me, it was actually convenient. I was grateful for the time to prepare for the divorce. As a token of gratitude, I'll bring him down to the depths. That's the least I can do. This is all your fault for cheating on me. So, don't blame me. During these six months, with Jody's support, I was rehired as a full-time employee. Since web design requires a certain level of knowledge, the company offered me a generous salary as an experienced professional and I gathered plenty of crucial evidence. When I hired the detective agency, they quickly gathered the proof I needed. Sullivan had been reckless, thinking I wouldn't find out. They got evidence quickly by tailing him on days he claimed to be working late or on business trips. What a fool he was. Unaware of my divorce preparations, Sullivan came home today, throwing his clothes around and saying, "Hey." I'm home. Get dinner ready. So casually. I used to get irritated by such remarks, but not anymore. With a smile. Tonight, I made your favorite steak. I served Sullivan his favorite dish. I felt nothing for him. I'll be saying goodbye to this big child soon. When I was about to put my plan into action. I'm going on an overseas business trip tomorrow so I'll be gone for four days. Sullivan told me. An overseas business trip at last. I marveled at Sullivan's bold move and said, Does your company even have overseas business trips? I've never heard of your colleagues going on one. I asked, pretending to be suspicious. I wanted to see the look of panic on Sullivan's face. What? It started this year. I guess I'll be the first to experience it," Sullivan said with a wry smile. Really? Are you going alone? Or with someone else? Well, some co-workers are coming along too. Why are you asking all of a sudden? 
You never usually ask about this. Sullivan was clearly flustered. It was obvious he was hiding something. I was just curious. It's an overseas trip, so make sure to have fun. I smiled and walked away. I made up my mind. I would do it while Sullivan was on his business trip overseas. I resolved this in my heart. On the day of Sullivan's departure, Sullivan was unusually cheerful. Normally, he would have me prepare his things, but this time he said he would do it himself. I was convinced he was planning to take time off work and go on a trip with Caddy. This is the perfect chance. I'll definitely divorce him today. About two hours after Sullivan left the house, the doorbell rang. The moving company I had arranged arrived. I had timed everything for the day Sullivan left for his trip. Please take all these boxes to this address. I planned to move all of my and Mariah's belongings to my parents' house. I had already explained everything to my parents. When I told them, I'm getting a divorce. He cheated on me. They were quite shocked. But when they learned I had changed jobs and hired a detective to gather evidence, they understood my resolve. Nick, my dad said. If that's the case, come live with us. We'll take care of Mariah. Fortunately, my parents' house wasn't far from ours, so Mariah wouldn't have to change schools. I decided to lean on my parents and live with them. Of course, my parents were already aware that we would be moving today. While I was coordinating with the movers, Mariah was with my parents. We didn't have much stuff, so the move was completed in a day. The next day, we started organizing and settling into my parents' house. Mariah seemed happy to live with her grandparents. This is going to be fun! She said, which was a relief. And girls are amazing. Even without me saying anything, Mariah tidied up and helped clean the rooms. I was amazed every day at how much she had grown. I had also told Mariah that we would be living apart from Sullivan. Are you going to be okay without dad? Won't you be lonely? I asked her. Not at all. Dad doesn't love me. No matter how much I ask, he never spends time with me. I don't like dad, she said. What kind of dad makes his daughter say something like that? Mariah's words strengthened my resolve to get divorced even more. After getting everything ready, Sullivan's return date came in no time. When will you be back? I texted Sullivan and waited for his response. But no matter how much time passed, there was no reply. I thought it was strange and kept waiting patiently when I noticed a notification sound from my mobile phone. Is it from Sullivan? I pulled my phone out of my pocket and looked at the screen to see a shocking message. Seeing the content. What? I couldn't help but shout. A message. That was really fun. This trip to Hawaii felt like our honeymoon. Once everything settles down, let's get married. From Sullivan arrived. By everything settles down, did he mean once my divorce is finalized? How stupid can this guy be? To send a message meant for his girlfriend to me, the one person he shouldn't have sent it to, it's just too funny. I couldn't help but laugh at his idiocy. Then, the message was quickly deleted. Sullivan must have realized his mistake and hurriedly deleted it. I wish I could have seen the look on his face. Of course, I had already taken a screenshot, so it doesn't matter if he deleted the message. I immediately called Sullivan. Hey, I got a message saying let's get married even though I'm already married. What does that mean? Sullivan. Uh, you saw that? Stammered. Yes, I saw it clearly. But it's strange. Don't you mean to say let's get divorced instead? What? How was the affair trip? Did you enjoy spending time with your mistress while lying to your family? Um, well, that is... 
Sullivan stumbled over his words, clearly flustered by my questions. At this point, the answer was obvious. Caddy was indeed the mistress, and the person on the other end of Sullivan's frequently used phone was her. His late returns, the mistaken message about getting married on a business trip, it was all because of Caddy. So, you want a divorce, right? Wait! Let's talk this through. There's nothing to talk about. Besides, we're already divorced. What? The truth was, I had submitted the divorce papers the same day Sullivan left for his so-called business trip, which was actually an affair trip. Thanks to his signature, the divorce papers were quickly processed. That's a lie! You can't just get a divorce like that! Oh, you mean the completed divorce papers you left in your suit pocket? As I said this, I could sense Sullivan's panic even over the phone. You didn't, the divorce papers. Yes, I filed them as you wished. That wasn't. I didn't actually want to. Let's just talk when I get back, okay? I said there's nothing to talk about. With that, I hung up on Sullivan without waiting for his response. After that, he sent several desperate messages. Please reconsider. And? Those divorce papers were just for show. But I ignored them all. A few hours later, Sullivan called again. It was probably when I got home. Even though I ignored it multiple times, the phone kept ringing, so I had no choice but to answer it. What? Do you still need something? Hey! What is this? Why are your and Mariah's things gone? And this picture? I told you we divorced, didn't I? We can't live together. Do you like that picture? It turned out well, didn't it? I laughed. In fact, I had framed and placed in the living room a picture of Sullivan and Caddy walking arm in arm. No way! What about Mariah? She hates being apart from me, doesn't she? She was always saying, Dad! Dad! Are you going to ignore Mariah's feelings? I snorted with laughter. Mariah said she hates you. You are the one who ignored Mariah's feelings. That's a lie. And you're just working part-time. How are you going to raise her alone? Oh, I'm already working full-time, and my salary is pretty good. So don't worry. When did this happen? I haven't heard anything about it. There's no need to tell someone who's never home, right? All the evidence is gathered, so make sure you pay the alimony and child support properly and give my regards to Caddy. With that, I hung up the phone again. He kept calling multiple times after that, but it was annoying, so I blocked his calls. After that, I again sought help from the lawyer introduced by Jody, and it was decided that Sullivan and Caddy would pay alimony. Also, through the lawyer, Sullivan agreed to pay $500 a month in child support until Mariah turns 20. If Sullivan doesn't pay the child support, the lawyer would enforce it through legal means. Also, Caddy's parents found out about her relationship with a married man when she was demanded to pay the alimony. She was told to break up, and she dumped Sullivan. It seems she didn't have strong enough feelings for Sullivan to continue their relationship against her parents' objections. I said serves you right in my mind. As for me, my work is going very well. The side job I started as a distraction has become too much to handle because my main job is so busy. Returning to my workplace after a long time, I was surprised by all the changes in the system and equipment, but I'm doing my best to keep up. For my lovely Mariah, for Jody who helped me, and for my supportive parents, I am determined to succeed in my job and repay them.